So the first one on my list is going to have to be the 2020 Hyundai i30N Fastback. And so I specify Fastback because there is an i30N hatchback overseas. Right now we don't get either, of course, but I personally like the Fastback better. I do own a Fastback, so it only makes sense, of course. But in the US right now, the only N car we currently have is the Veloster. But for everybody outside the US, there, of course, is the i30N hatchback and the Fastback as well. Fastback in particular interested me because it is longer and lower than the hatchback, so it makes for a little better looks, in my opinion. Powering that beast is a 2-liter turbocharged inline 4-cylinder, putting out 271 horse power 260 pound feet of torque quite a bit for the size of the car there sent to the front wheels through a six speed manual transmission only giving you a zero to 60 of approximately 6.1 seconds and of course there's the fact that it looks absolutely amazing and it's a hyundai so you got the exceptional 10 year 100,000 mile powertrain warranty as well all of these reasons lead me to believe that it would do just fine here in the u.s so i urge you hyundai please send us this car then next on my list has to be the Ford Puma. And perhaps out of all the vehicles on my list, this has got to be the one I believe the most would do the best here in the US. Reason being, okay, so the Ford Puma is a crossover. It is available outside the US. And you guys probably already know in America, right now the SUV crossover craze is crazy. Everybody is buying those up and it looks a ton better than the current Echo Sport. It's actually 3.5 inches longer as well. It comes in an ST trim as well, a little sportier version with a six speed manual if you wanted it, that's pretty cool. It starts at roughly $22,000 even, so it's priced right as well. It has a flat bottom steering wheel available, digital gauge cluster available. And again, it's a crossover, so more than likely it would sell perfectly fine here in the US. And essentially when it comes to the power plant, it's pretty similar to the Echo Sport. It offers the three cylinder as the standard engine setup. It also offers a four cylinder engine that's available if you wanted it, 123 or 153 horsepower. That's pretty standard for that size of a vehicle, honestly. Automatic transmission is available for the Puma as well. And again, overall, really what it comes down to, it looks absolutely amazing for what it is, the small crossover that it is. It gives you a digital gauge cluster flat bottom steering wheel. And I can almost guarantee you it would outsell the Echo Sport that we currently have here in the US. Next on my list is the Honda E. And so this is kind of one where I personally want to see it in the US. I don't think it's ever going to come here. And you guys will probably see why as I continue here, but the Honda E is a new electric car by Honda. It gives you 137 miles of range. It's a rear wheel drive platform. 50-50 weight distribution and a very low center of gravity. So therefore, you can imagine it would be an absolute blast to drive and within an electric car, that instant torque is going to be there as well. So this should be an ultimate city car, really. And it gets even better though on the inside. It has a lounge-like interior. If you look at the dash with all of its screens, it's absolutely awesome. I've never seen that many screens, I don't think, in a car before. It's priced at around 34,000 US dollars. So that's why I'm saying it's probably Probably a bit overpriced if they were to bring it here to the US. I think everyone can agree with me on that. Although tax incentives would bring that price down a little bit since it's an electric vehicle, but still a bit overpriced for actually what it is. When you could buy a standard Tesla Model 3, it really get a little bit more than what the Honda E would offer. But nonetheless, with the 50-50 weight distribution, power being set to the rear wheels and that interior, it personally makes me want to drive it. I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this video would definitely want to give that one a spin as well. Next on my list is going to be the Volkswagen T-Rock. And so at a price point starting at approximately 22,000 US dollars, it's pretty darn similar to the Ford Puma, honestly. Four motion all wheel drive is available. You can get it with a six speed manual or a seven speed DSG. And not only that, there's a T-Rock R available overseas which actually will send you to 60 in only 4.8 seconds. That's pretty darn cool. And again, with the crossover craze here in the US, Volkswagen should definitely consider bringing this one to the US. I have a feeling it would do absolutely amazing. Just like the Puma, you have a digital gauge display. It's available. The exterior looks, once again, on point. It looks kind of like the Atlas Cross Sport, just in a mini crossover way, I guess you could say. But it's definitely something, again, with the crossover craze going crazy in the US, it's something I think would definitely sell very well here. 
Peugeot. Next on my list is going to be the Peugeot 508. Starting price point of approximately $29,000. This is a four door fastback and it looks absolutely amazing from every angle in my opinion. Comes with approximately 181 to 224 horsepower. That power is sent to the front wheels through an eight speed automatic. But here's the best part you guys. It comes with a flat bottom and a flat top steering wheel like a freaking race car you gotta love it it's a very futuristic looking interior with digital gauges looks like nothing else that we have here in the u.s right now which is why i think a lot of people like me wanting to look like nothing else on the road would absolutely love it especially for the steering wheel alone there should definitely be more flat bottom and top steering wheels here in the u.s so i actually really like that one Next on my list is going to be the Alpine A110 or the A110. And this is another French manufacturer backed by Renault. The A110 is an aluminum bodied coupe with 252 horsepower sent to the rear wheels through a seven speed dual clutch, essentially a Porsche Cayman fighter, roughly 54,000 US dollars. So again, it might be on the higher end of the price point where it should be, but zero to 60 in 4.5 seconds sold in Europe and Japan only. As far as the interior goes, it comes with a leather Dynamica seat combination with intense bolstering. Very well bolstered seats from what I can tell. Once again, a flat bottom steering wheel and it looks like an absolute blast to drive. So I had to put it on the list. I think everybody would agree with me. You guys wanna drive this thing. I wanna drive this thing. They should bring it to the US. <laughs> Next on my list is the Honda S660. And so this is one, I don't think they're ever gonna bring it to the US, but it's still freaking cool. Let me explain. This is a car exclusive to Japan, Honda's home country, of course. It is a mid-engined roadster starting at roughly $18,600, less than a new Civic. Comes with a turbocharged three-cylinder, 63 horsepower that's why i don't think it's ever coming to the u.s 77 pound feet of torque sent to the rear wheels you guys through a six-speed manual or a cbt with paddle shifters six-speed manual of course be the way to go here leather alcantara interior with an alcantara flat bottom steering wheel which is new for the 2020 s660 as well so that's pretty darn cool i think it would be a fun city car here in the u.s although i probably would agree that honda would not sell many of them here in the u.s so it probably makes sense for them not to bring in here but it still looks like an absolute blast to drive it kind of reminds me of the honda beat and it's one of those cars that some people will probably import to the u.s once it becomes 25 years old that's the law but still looks like an absolute blast to drive next on my list is actually a car that hasn't come out yet but it is planned to come out very soon being the tvr griffith so tvr is a british sports car manufacturer essentially this is a front engined rear wheel drive sports car powered by a five liter naturally aspirated V8. And if you're thinking exactly what I'm thinking, you're right, that naturally aspirated V8 is actually the Mustang GT engine that I have in my car, that is wonderful. But the cool part about the TVR Griffith, the exhaust is actually found in the front, not in the back of the vehicle. There is a massive rear diffuser, speed activated rear wing, Alcantara steering wheel, digital gauges, striking design both inside and out. This car looks like nothing else on the road. It looks like a TVR. If you guys are familiar with the brand, I remember racing these back on my old Gran Turismo games on PlayStation. These things were fun to drive then. And I can only imagine how much fun it would be to drive here in the US, especially with that Mustang V8 engine that I currently have and own. So I can only imagine how much fun this thing would be. This next one is a fun one, you guys. Subaru Lavorg. And this is a wagon version of essentially if the Impreza and the WRX had a baby. So it starts at roughly $37,500 US dollars. It's about $1,000 more than the Outback. Comes with two engine options, a 1.6 liter turbo or a two liter turbocharged Subaru Boxer engine, of course, 167 horsepower or 264 horsepower. Of course, power being sent to all four wheels through Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive system. The front end looks identical to a WRX. The interior looks pretty darn similar to a WRX, including the steering wheel. The main difference here, I think, is it is a CVT only. There's no six-speed manual or any manual transmission available there. Honestly, I think it makes sense for Subaru not to bring this one to the US just because I don't think it's gonna outsell the Outback that's so popular here in the US. But if you wanted a wagon WRX, this is essentially what you're gonna wanna look at. This is the closest thing you're gonna get to a wagon WRX, basically. 
And then last on my list, this is a fun one, you guys. This is called the Toyota Century, roughly 180,000 US dollars. And yes, this is a real thing. There is a near $200,000 Toyota that is still being made to this day. This is Toyota's version of a Rolls Royce, essentially. It comes with power rear curtains. Yes, you heard me right, not sunshades, but power rear curtains, a massaging rear seat, just for one side, of course, that's for the CEO, an adjustable LED reading lamp in the back. It's kind of like those adjustable reading lamps you put in your office, but it's in the back seat. And if anybody was wondering what the heck is that bird logo up front, that represents the Imperial House of Japan. It looks like a phoenix, but it's actually a different fictional bird for your information. It is not technically a phoenix. And essentially this car was made for Japanese CEOs and politicians to look very stately in. So it is definitely a pretty stately looking car. And I can't imagine this thing even selling in the US, even as a Lexus. It is specific to the Japanese market and that is more than likely where it is going to stay.